At the start of World War II, France was one of the most powerful countries in Europe. But when Germany invaded it in 1940, it fell in only six weeks. But why did this happen? Hey, why historians, welcome back to the wine history. I'm your host, Alexander. After World War I ended, Northeast France was left in shambles. The fighting had pretty much destroyed everything. Over the next 20 years, as Germany began arming itself, France started getting worried. Desperate to avoid a repeat of the destruction of World War I, France set up the Maginot Line, which is just a fancy name for a series of fortifications along their border with Germany. But, France didn't set up defenses along their border with Belgium or Luxembourg, meaning Germany could attack through there instead. Also, France put less fortifications in the Ardennes, a region that is pretty hard to cross. As you already know, that didn't work out too well for France, and to add to their terrible planning, they still believed that they could win with World War I tactics. When World War II began with Germany's invasion of Poland in September 1939, France, which was committed to defending Poland, invaded Germany's Saarland. However, once the German troops started arriving from the Polish front, the French decided it would be better to return home. After this, the phony war began. During this period of World War II, Britain and France just made plans for what they were going to do without actually doing anything. Neither of them wanted to fight another war, which explains why the UK only sent about 400,000 troops. Even though Britain and France didn't want to fight, Germany had other plans. Throughout the phony war, Germany was preparing to fight them, and on May 10th, 1940, they were finally ready. Remember how France had only put the Maginot Line along the border with Germany? Well, Hitler definitely did, because instead of invading France directly, he decided to invade the Netherlands, Belgium, and Luxembourg. Luxembourg fell that day, and the Netherlands followed a week after the start of the invasion. The Allies thought this was the main attack, so they rushed to defend Belgium, but they had been deceived. Belgium was just a diversion, and France abandoned the Ardennes, which wasn't even fortified well to begin with, to go defend Belgium. The Germans breezed through the Ardennes and into France. Soon after, they made it to the English Channel, which meant all the soldiers in Belgium were surrounded. The best Allied troops had been encircled, and even though some managed to escape from the French city of Dunkirk across the English Channel, most of them were captured. The Germans now had twice as many men as the French did, and even worse, France had no contingency plan. Morale collapsed, and 10 days after the last evacuations at Dunkirk on June 4th, Paris fell. Italy had also begun invading through the Alps, opening another front to the war. Believing everything was lost, French Prime Minister Paul Reynaud resigned on June 16th, and in his place, the president appointed World War I hero Philippe Pétain. Pétain wanted an armistice with Germany, and two days later, Charles de Gaulle, a high-ranking military official, fled to London, becoming the leader of the French government in exile. There, he would boost the morale of the French resistance through radio broadcasts. On June 25th, the armistice went into effect, but it was the equivalent of surrender. Most of France was occupied by the Germans and Italians, and the part that wasn't became known as Vichy France, with Pétain as its leader. However, Pétain betrayed his country and converted Vichy France into a German puppet state. France, one of the most powerful countries at the time, had fallen in only 46 days. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel. You can also leave me another question you want me to answer in the comments section. I'll see you guys in the next video.